Hey everybody, this is Julie Quinn here and I'm going to do a quick video to talk to you about an essay that some of you I think have already seen. This is uh, Ting's post and she's posted it in um, the peer review for the argumentative essay. And you can kind of see some of the notes that I've left her here. I'm going to actually um, keep this zoomed in so um, you can see some, some of the notes that I left in the margin that are actually published in the discussion. And um, I want to just talk to you about some of the things that I've seen overall to do a quick like five minute video uh, where you again can go and look at my feedback in detail. But I wanted to show you some of the features that I thought would make a really successful paper. And I think it's important to show you those features from one of your classmates uh, or peers, right? So in the beginning, we've got um, uh, technology in the future of healthcare. So we know that this is going to be um, not like just essay three or argumentative essay, but I know what the paper is going to be about by looking at the title. It's technology in the future of healthcare. So she says people live about twice as long as they did a hundred years ago. And I said, well, if you add the specific statistic, I think that would be a really cool hook detail because remember everybody introductions have warm up information, a hook detail, and then a thesis statement. And, um, she said, uh, major contributing factors to this are advances that have been made in healthcare. Some of these have been milestones in human history, such as the discovery of antibiotics, the widespread use of vaccines, and genetic mapping. She's not saying anything specific about those, about like when um, antibiotics appeared, so there's no need for citation here. She's just giving us background and setting the scene. She said these developments have had significant benefits to everyone involved in the healthcare industry. So she's warming us up to get to this thesis, and she says, future technological advances in healthcare will bring even greater benefits to patients and healthcare workers, including increased diagnostic convenience and accuracy, rapid expansion of telemedicine, and advancements in minimally and non-invasive surgeries and procedures. So the yellow part is the thesis, and then this last part that I'm going to highlight in green, although you won't see that on the original file, you just see that in this video, are the reasons. And what's really nice is you can see that each of these reasons are now set up as sections of the paper. I didn't require that students use headers, but what's really strong with this is it's showing me some internal logic and organization. So the increased diagnostic convenience and accuracy is the first section. It just says convenient and accurate diagnosis. So what do we know? We're talking about uh, diagnostic convenience. She rephrases it a little bit, but I think that's appropriate because we're moving from using the di word diagnostic as an adjective to it being in a noun position. So it doesn't have to mim mimic it word for word, but it's the idea or the concept of it. And I said, hey, why don't we just make it plural by saying diagnoses? Because of course, millions of people get diagnosed diagnoses every year in the United States or even in the world if we're going to make this a world future paper. So uh, I said since a lot of this is probably borrowed content and not common knowledge for the class, just name your source and bookend it. And so remember bookending means that uh, if you borrow more than one sentence of content, now I saw a source very clearly named here, so as far as the draft is concerned in this paragraph, this is fine. But remember, before final submission, you could say something like, according to Vasca at a 2016, so we would put it right here and say, and remember, oops, let me write 16 more. Uh, according to Vasca, so you'll see by adding something like this in the section here, we show the boundaries. I'm just going to highlight both. Well, I guess I can't highlight them on this is a hyperlink, but this is meant to be highlighted. You can see where the borrowing begins and ends, especially if it's more than one sentence. And this looks like it's just two. It doesn't always have to be at the end. But when you name a source at the beginning, you don't put Vasca in parentheses because that would read according to out of 2016 biomedical, according to Vasca. And then you do put the year because, A, this is APA style, and the year um, is a supplement that is a nod to the style, but doesn't change the meaning of the sentence at all. That's, you know, if you look at uh, a sentence where in-text citations are at the end, in addition, look at this one, in addition to its use in assessing the samples, it may also be developed to replace the need for actual biological tissue, which would reduce the risk to patients uh, posed by invasive procedures. So 
you don't need the source to make the the content clear. The source just says where the content was borrowed. And I recommended to Ting that you take out the period here and you just leave the one there. That's where the sentence actually ends. So you can see here we have the section on diagnosis. The next one should be telemedicine and it's telemedicine. And the last one, if it's organized correctly, would be advancements in um, surgeries and procedures. So we've got telemedicine, then we look for minimally invasive and non-invasive surgeries and procedures. So you can see how if you just compartmentalize your paper into a page or two in each section, then you're going to write a really thoughtful argument with multiple pieces of evidence. You'll notice in the structure of this that this section is not just one paragraph. For her first point, she's got one, two, three paragraphs. And for her second point, one, two, three. Her third point, one, two, three. Yeah, so I mean, that seems to be that Goldilocks space, about three paragraphs per section, a page to a page and a half, and all paragraphs are the same size. You'll notice as well that we have a counterpoint section with its own little header, which I thought was nice. Again, not required. You could use a signal phrase instead. Remember when Maddie, um, our tutor, was, was posting the, the infographic and had that video in class for that? So it's really easy for me just to eyeball this in draft form and um, to get a sense of, okay, what is actually going on here? Here's the structure of the essay. It's a tradi traditional argument that builds on the main points, considers some opposing viewpoints, and then just has a conclusion paragraph. And, you know, I make little bits of recommendation like, can you provide a lasting final image of what this feature looks like from the patient perspective? So sort of like, you know, pulling away from all of this and you know, uh, putting us back into the middle um, of the action. You can get a good sense as well as you uh, read through a lot of this by looking at um, uh, thoughtful uh, topic sentence construction, a couple of little grammar notes here and there. Um, I've left notes for everybody's draft in the draft uh, in the peer review section. So take the time to not just look at your own feedback, but to look at the feedback that I gave your peers. Well, what I think would be really good for you guys is to look at the, the feedback um, that you gave to a particular peer and then what I said to them and to see where we overlap and what we have in common and to see what you may have missed that I thought was important. That will give you additional insight on how to finalize this paper this week. Um, finally, if you take a look, you can see this is a really strong, thoughtful references section. This is what it looks like. The margins are one inch. It's organized alphabetically. It's double spaced. We've got the title of the article. Then we have the title of the um, journal issue, volume, page numbers, document indicators, and, and some documents don't have document indicators. Uh, this one has like a, a URL instead. So they're not all going to look the exact same, but the format should be internally consistent. If you need help on any of this, reach out to me, reach out to the peer tutors, um, and great luck to you.